Hello, Velociraptors. I've hoped that you've enjoyed your little mini exploration of what biodiversity is, but I wanted to kind of recap on what we've gone over and some of the key takeaways I want to make sure that you're understanding. First, remember biodiversity is this large category of variation in life. Now, if it's made up of three subset or components that make up biodiversity, species, ecosystem, and genetics. And those three little pieces are what make up um, the larger category of biodiversity. And now I've had you jump in to explore a little bit more about species diversity. I mean, um, and you should have looked through a described species. Now I had a category to kind of show you, well, how many described species do we have? Well, we roughly have about 1.9 million described species. And that seems like a lot, but a lot, most of the time students guess astronomical numbers, but we really only know about 1.9 million. And that is also shown that when we look at how many estimated organisms or species there are, we estimate that there's somewhere between 30 to 100 million. Well, that's a one big range of estimation on how many organisms there actually are, but also that means that we know a very little small piece of what organisms are actually present here on Earth, which means we have very little understanding or a limited understanding of the biodiversity present here on Earth. Um, and second is when you're looking through those described species is I want you to kind of, this is why I was asking you to think about biases, um, because when we look at described species, it's not actually divided up evenly. We see that some categories make up a large portion of the species we know about or are described species. So we see insects makes up a huge chunk of the amount of described species we see, and we see flowering plants makes up a huge chunk of the species that we know um, have listed as part of that 1.9 million. Now, in some biases that might be associated with that is we think of insects, there are a lot of insects, tons, and um, they're easily accessible. So it's e that might be why we're seeing a huge concentration of our described species are insects because they're easily accessible we don't see um, anything associated with trouble of identifying them. Same thing with flowering plants. They're again, easily accessible. They're found just about everywhere, um, which might be part of the reason of why we're seeing that again, that that's making up a higher portion um, of our described species. While others might not necessarily be contributing as much because one, they don't, um, they're not as large. So like mammals, not as, large of a category as compared to insects per se. Um, so kind of looking at that graph with a skeptical eye to understand the perspective of where it's coming from. It also is translated into the next chart or set of charts, which are showing you what we actually know about the um, estimated population. So if, in terms of insects, right? Insects makes up the most of the described species. However, when you look at the percentages, we really don't know that much about the total insect population. It's a relatively small subset that we know um, in relation to what it looks like in the described species category. And when you look at vertebrates, you see the opposite. We know a large portion, roughly around 70 some percent um, of the vertebrate population we have understanding of. Um, where other categories, which are much more smaller or harder to access, like bacteria, we know very little about. So you can see estimated that's roughly 1% um, of the bacteria population that we actually have an understanding of. Um, and that's what I want you to take away that, so insects, insects, insects and flowering plants make up a majority of that described species. So of that 1.9 million we know. But when we look at the understanding of that species category as a whole, we see that um, vertebrates we know a lot about. Vertebrates we know a lot about, mollusks we know quite a bit about, um, flowering plants we know quite a bit about, um, but some things that we know very, very little about like bacteria, um, protista, they're much smaller categories, which is why even though they're making up a smaller portion of the described species, there's a lot that we need to learn about that species. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed your little exploration of biodiversity, looking at species biodiversity in a more shedded light. You now understand that a described species requires three um, classifications. You must have seen it. It needs a, um, a tailored description and a scientific name, as well as a specimen on file. And you've got to look at some of those specimen collections.
Um, but I hope you enjoyed the activities. They're free of access, of course, as you move through. Your last thing is I've given you a bonus round, which is nine questions that you'll have a quick set amount of time, about probably about five minutes, to see how many you can get right and how many other questions you get right. Those are additional raffle tickets that you get. But thanks for tuning in.